Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the Khay Talks. I'm excited today. I have a guest. His name is Abdi Fatah, and he is one of the members of Hidayah House. They're amazing. What does Hidayah mean first and foremost? It's guidance. And for us to have people in this village, in this Khay village, that are really focused on guiding people to whatever they can, I think that that's a beautiful thing. So stay tuned. Today we're talking about vulnerability. <laughs> Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to Khay Talks. I'm excited. And we have a special guest. His name is Abdi Fatah. I'm sure you've heard about him or seen him somewhere in one of these events. Hidai House is a big name on social media for guidance and for so many things that we're going to explore today. So tune in, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and um, yeah, check on them. Hidai House, Instagram. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Thanks for having me. Incredible. I'm excited. Heard a lot about the show. Heard a lot about your work. Jazakallah <laughs> <laughs> khairah. Well, yeah. Well, I've heard a lot about you and what you do and your team. So we're here to explore that today. Um, our thing is human connection, and you know that. We've had mm -hmm. a great conversation so far about it. Um, so I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Yeah. Um, tell us who you are. Who is the man sitting in front of me today? I never know how to introduce myself, I'm not going to lie. We're but, working on it. <laughs> uh, my name is Abdi Fatah Hussain, um, co-founder of an organization called The Die House. Alhamdulillah, we've been around for about six years now. And yes. we specifically work on supporting youth that are just looking for resources, going through the hardest times in their life. And now it's grown to an organization that spans across the city with a lot of different members. Shout out to the team. Alhamdulillah. And uh, all of us have different specialties, but mostly people call it to us when they're in crises, right? Nice. If somebody has a family member who's undergoing some sort of mental illness, right, and they don't know who to call, they call us. If there's a conflict that's going on between people, you know what I mean, they can reach out to us. If it's as simple as even trying to find employment, nice. right? We, don't, we might not have the answer for everything, but we have enough resources that we can at least point you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And Alhamdulillah, now it's um, become a place where like we host spaces, events, conversations kind of like the one we're having right now mm -hmm. where we talk about the things that we really need to as a community and move forward because where's the branding if we don't support and love each other who will who will <laughs> you know hoodie's what? coming out soon it's coming but, out uh, y'all better y'all better get on it yeah i need um, my hoodie actually inshallah and I, I need i need jersey too and we it's coming it's inshallah coming. we're gonna do a jersey swap that's you know? right <laughs> So I feel like, um, you know, I went on your social media mm -hmm. and I saw the quote, right? Mm -hmm. If we don't love and support each other, who will? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a question that we all have to deeply ask ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's not just that it's on your hoodie. It's something that, you know, you walk the walk, right? You don't just mm -hmm. talk the talk. So what is it that inspired you to even feel that? I'm sure it's mm -hmm. life experiences. I'm sure something brought you to want to let people know, hey, mm -hmm. wake up, smell the coffee. We need to support each other. We need to love on each other. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, who will? Yeah. So where did that come from for you? It, there was a lot of um, a lot of origin stories with it, but mainly most of the members of our team were witnessing within the Somali young men. Uh, There's a lot of gun violence going on, and there still is. But the only issue is that we never seen any community work being done, right? People just took it as like it's just part of life now, mm -hmm. right? Certain areas you go to you might get shot. Um, certain neighborhoods you grow up in, you might not be able to make it past a certain age. Exactly. Uh, the only way to survive is to leave your community. Um, and, and, and people were, were, were going through a lot of different addictions because of it, right? And a lot of, just a lot of different um, effects because of the things that we were going through. And gun violence was only one factor. So we asked ourselves, if nobody's coming into our communities and helping us, aside from, of course, you know, the random eight-week programs that, you know, the city would throw at us or strangers coming into our community to tell you, stop doing that and then yeah. just leave. Yeah. We said, how about we learn how to support our own community through this? When a habit is asking for support with her son, how can we be the people that she reaches out to as opposed to strangers? Mm -hmm. You know, how can we be the ones to help a family when they're mourning? How can we help cover funeral costs? Whatever the case may be. And uh, it was hard. There was a learning curve. We never did community work before this, right? All of us came from different walks of life. You know, I was think I was working security at the time <laughs> while my homies were doing IT or whatever the case is, no. right? But alhamdulillah, uh, we put ourselves into different spaces. We learned, we took whatever we could. We built lists of resources. And alhamdulillah, now we're mental health professionals that are equipped to help people during those times. But um, even, even, even as we went along our journey, I think the biggest thing is the fact that, like, the dean was the biggest driving force. Without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala putting us on this path, wouldn't we wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, even the word hidayah means guidance, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, and the guidance that we're able to help other, pe help other people find is something that Allah made us a tool for, right? 
Um, and, and we're not anyone's heroes. We're not a savior. Any yeah. change that we may have made is literally through the mercy of Allah alone. So just coming with that mindset, we know we can't fix everything, but it gives us the sabr to at least try our best while exactly. we're here, you know? No, I think that's important. Mm -hmm. I think that's, you know, so many people don't talk about this, but I love talking about the word reference. Mm -hmm. And if you don't put that footprint in there, then mm -hmm. where's the little kid that's going to come behind you one day and be like, you know, I think I seen this guy named Abdul Fattah mm -hmm. on this podcast, this random podcast. Mm -hmm. And he said this, and I'm, I can actually live by that, right? Mm -hmm. So the purpose of it is all for reference. And it's something that's going to benefit you in this world, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to benefit you in the hereafter, as mm -hmm. you said. And what better benefit than that, right? Exactly. Um, and I think we're only as strongest as you know, our weakest link, therefore helping others is really helping yourself. Mm -hmm. And one day, yeah. yeah, one day your Abdul Fattah is going to need some help. And what if it's the, the young kid that he one day helped out? Mm -hmm. What if that kid comes and puts you on game one day, right? Mm -hmm. This thing circulates. And, and, and it wasn't like we picked ourselves up by the bootstraps. Like, there were people that helped us along the way, you know exactly. what I mean? All elders in the community, people who we thought, we thought no one did this work before, and there were so many that did it before us. Yeah, it just right? wasn't seen. It, it just wasn't, wasn't seen, exactly. So once we reached out to them, we would learn. Alhamdulillah, they gave us the templates, you know, and we yeah. were able to run with it. But yeah, no, no, absolutely. And yeah. it's Sadaqa Jariya. Mm -hmm. And one thing that you teach one person, you don't mm -hmm. have to know it all to teach mm -hmm. people things, mm -hmm. right? And so, but first you have to believe in the concept and believe in the vision and what it could possibly do and knowing that you yourself mm -hmm. need it because the reminder mm -hmm. benefits the believer, right? Exactly. So this work, what has it done for you? Like, the more you help people, does it feed your soul? Like, for mm -hmm. me, the reason why I do this is because it feeds my soul. Mm -hmm. Seeing somebody do better than when I first met them, the I think is feeling. everything yeah, for me, you yeah. know? It has been very humbling. Because um, you go into situations and people ask you for help. And sometimes I'm sure we've all been through this. Like, you'll have a friend who asks you for advice on something mm -hmm. or uh, some, some sort of support. And it seems so simple from the outside looking yeah. in, right? Like, you may see someone like an abusive relationship, per se. And your first thought is just like, why don't you just get out of it? But this person clearly had that thought for a long time. Exactly. Clearly, they're still in it. So there's a deeper reason. Sometimes the way that we talk to people, um, kind of like in their mind, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If I tell you every single day you're a loser, why don't you do this, why don't you do that, what's wrong with you, and you've heard it from everyone else, why wouldn't you believe it? Yeah. Why wouldn't you just say, why, why, why should I change mm -hmm. if that's just the way I am? So mm -hmm. it's been very humbling in learning like the adab, the way that we speak, um, the akhlaq that we have towards other people, our behavior, our mannerisms, and just realizing again, like, like you said, it's, it's, it's been great for us, especially for me personally. Um, every time somebody asks me for help, it's like, alhamdulillah, it's an opportunity for me to raise my ranks in Jannah, inshallah. Exactly, you know, like, and then also look within mm -hmm. to even help this person, mm -hmm. right? Because you're not helping them with external stuff. You're exactly. helping them from what Habdiftah might know, right? Exactly. And so you have to, That's a. it's a self-exploration thing mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And the more that you help someone, the more you learn from them too. 100%. How many people they, have people had... People have taught me so much. So much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so. And, 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 and again, I think it's really important to say like, we're not in a role of saving people, you know what I mean? We're not... We're not, we're not put onto this earth to say, oh, we figured it all out, and now we're going to put you on game. It's just literally saying, okay, well, let's figure this out together, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And if we don't know something, I know somebody that knows Who something that, I, that knows way better exactly. than me on this specific topic, which goes back into, like, the collaboration thing. Like, alhamdulillah, Hidayah House is always reaching out to people like you, you know what I mean? Alhamdulillah, you have your own fortes. Absolutely. Other people have their own strengths, and we can all cover up for each other's weaknesses, inshallah, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why we all have to step up and, mm -hmm. and collaborate. But collaboration takes understanding that it's community over competition 100%. it's the fact that it, when Hidayah house wins i win you get what i'm saying it's 100%. like for me to see you guys do great it's only going to help me that means i have somewhere to come home to mm -hmm. right that means mm -hmm. i can call up i'm like hey listen i'm having this issue do you know someone who knows somebody mm -hmm. and so i think it's it's all just being human and humanizing this thing called life right mm -hmm. and humanizing it for male and females um, I think there's this, you know, there's a power struggle between men and women. 100%. I think uh, that power struggle is also between community members. It's mm -hmm. a between young folks that's like, yo, who could flex harder? Who has more followers on Instagram, mm -hmm. right? And it's it's an external thing, but internally we're all just walking around and nobody's living. Trying to figure it out. Nobody's living. Yeah. Everyone's existing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do you start living is the question, right? Yeah. You live through helping others. You live through um, helping yourself. You live through self-awareness and self-exploration. And mm. then, you know, leveling up that way. Because yeah. you can't level up without, you know, every step of the way being clear for you. Mm. And you need someone to, to help you along the way, right? Yeah, So 100%. tell me, um, with your team, like, how did you guys come together to do this? Do you feel like people just kind of came together organically? Or is mm. this, did you guys pick your team? Yeah, so 
interesting enough, everyone came in almost with a different purpose. Some people were trying to learn about how do I, how do I, how do I just get to talk to people better? Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And of, of course, the main underlying objective was the same for everyone in their heart, which is like, I want to be able to help people, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But everyone has a different reason why they want to help people, I've realized, right? Even between me and my, my homie, the co-founder, Ibrahim, yeah. like he, he, he's somebody who's very quiet, okay. you know? <laughs> I'm on the chatterbox, <laughs> he's quiet, but okay. he's basically the brains behind the organization. Mm-hmm. He thinks and he plans very thoroughly and detailed of like, how is this event going to, to be most welcoming for people? Nice. How is the schedule going to break down? We have other members of our team that are going to come in and be like, oh, if we talk about this topic, how will it make people feel? We have mm-hmm. somebody else, you know what I mean? Alhamdulillah, it's a very wide team, but somebody even literally just wants to focus on, like, how can we collect data best yeah. so we never have to repeat the same mistakes? Wow. How can we how can we learn from an event and hear what the people have said and then deliver on what they wanted as opposed to us thinking, yeah, this is what the community wants, mm-hmm. you know? Wow. So Alhamdulillah, everybody has their own fortes within the team. I promise you, all I do is talk, <laughs> you know? That's not true. That can't be true. That can't be true. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Can't be true. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it's just, I, I, I realize not everybody has to be good at everything, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. It's just about, and, and even us, we don't even have an interview process. Yeah. It's just about literally if we see somebody that's so good at what they do mm-hmm. and we feel like their heart's in the right place, we'll, yeah, we'll go through. up to them and be like, yo, please help us yeah. out. You yeah. know what I mean? No, I think that's yeah. beautiful. This this whole village mentality, right? Mm-hmm. Like on, on the ground, I created the Khayt village, right? Mm-hmm. And I no, feel so like, so do. yeah, thank you. And I feel like, the, kh- the whole purpose of the Khayt village is not just for us to rock hoodies and be like, yo, we're a part of KV, the Khayt village. It's not mm-hmm. really about that. It's about knowing that you have a wide, like the way that this circle, this, this table is a circular table. Mm-hmm. We're complete only because everywhere that's empty for everyone, somebody else can fill that spot for them. Mm-hmm. Like, I got mm-hmm. you, right? Mm-hmm. And when you know that you have a village, you operate different. 100%. When you know that you have people behind you, mm-hmm. you ain't got to look behind you to see who's there, right? Mm-hmm. You can literally focus on what you're doing and mm-hmm. you can focus better. Mm-hmm. So I feel like the village mentality is something that we all have to adapt. I feel like you guys are doing it at Hidai House. Mm-hmm. I feel like um, I'm. it's a privilege for me to even know other people who are doing this, mm-hmm. you know? That itself is finding your village, mm-hmm. you know? emotionally psychologically spiritually to be able to sit with people and be like oh you believe in this too okay so it's not lonely because finding that village is a lonely road sometimes Mm. you know thinking that you're the only one who has this type of concept of you know teamwork makes a dream work Mm -hmm. and and i think in anything a lot of us especially growing up in toronto and in the gta you'll walk into a space and you'll think to yourself okay i'm the first one ever do it Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. And I've seen that happen with Somalis in like a lot of different fields. And then once they get into it, they start to meet up with people and they're like, oh, I really wasn't. Yeah. But it's almost, it, I think the, the issue isn't us thinking that. The issue is why is it not known and why don't we see each other doing this work to begin with? Because no one's right? celebrating each other. Nobody's celebrating each other. And even if they are, it's behind closed doors and it's family and friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's a difference between like being humble and being just like honest mm-hmm. with, with our people. You know what I mean? Like. I do a lot of different work outside of Hidayah House doing community work Mm -hmm. and I've realized that, you know, like there's younger youth that ask me, like, do you make a living helping people? Yeah. Wallahi. I I never thought someone would ask me that question. I'm like, Mm -hmm. yeah, alhamdulillah, like I'm I'm doing the best that I can. I'm taking care of myself and my family. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's possible. Mm -hmm. And then I look back on it and when I was a kid, I seen people making a living off of some crazy things, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and it looked great because they had access to whatever they wanted, but there's no khayr in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no barakah, the there's no longevity, mm-hmm. from, you know, so mm-hmm. alhamdulillah. So when you're helping people, I think you're someone that has to understand vulnerability, right? Because we're all humans and I don't care how strong you are, I don't mm-hmm. care how big your chest is, how much mm-hmm. you can lift in the gym, mm-hmm. you're, you're always going to ha- be a vulnerable human being because you're not invincible. Mm-hmm. You're not made out of rock solid matter, right? Mm-hmm. You're a human being. Mm-hmm. You have enough, you have a fitra, you have things inside of you that need to be explored. And we're, we were all created in pairs for mm-hmm. a reason, mm-hmm. right? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thought that, you know, we're just, we don't need nobody, there would be nobody in mm-hmm. this world. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't have a mother and a father and cousins and peoples. And so do you feel like you have to understand vulnerability in order to help people? I think, um, I think that's a great question. I'm happy you asked it because a lot of the work that we do tackles vulnerability. Um, it's interesting when I think of like what is what does it mean to be a part of the ummah? 
it's literally the opposite of everything I've learned in school. You know, nice. you go into work, you go into school, you go to wherever, and it's just like you're on this ladder to success by yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You have to get yourself a degree. You have to do this. You have to do that. And all of that is true, but it's just like as an ummah, we actually have a collective responsibility to support each other, you know? And if we, we aren't able to do that, like, are we following the sunnah? Truly, you know what I mean? Are we, are we following the teachings of, like, exactly what was told on how to support each other? Exactly. There's a specific akhlaq and adab that was written for us on, like, how to actually even talk to each other. To correct when we're going each through other. Distress. Exactly. So for us to not be able to utilize it is wasted. And, and I, can, I, I can actually understand when people are going through certain things um, and they're just like, yo, I don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be able to share this with people. And I'm, I don't want to talk even about men. I'm talking about men and women yeah, and yeah, everyone in general, yeah. right? It's like, there's situations fam, where, like, you know, you'll be at a janazah. And then when Allah in the hadith or somebody passes, there, there, it is it is told that you shouldn't be weaving, like, weeping, and, yeah. weeping and wailing yeah. excessively, of yeah. course, right? The, the deen is about moderation. Mm -hmm. But on the other end of that spectrum, there will be people who will come up to you and say, you're not allowed to cry at all. You're the oldest sibling. You hold it in, right? But there's a saying, feelings buried alive never die, right? And you hold that in and you suffocate it. You'll be good for now. You can hold it down. Yeah. But eventually it will come out in a way where it will affect you in the most inconvenient times. You know what I mean? I see people that fall into addictions all the time. You know what I mean? Not because they specifically love sinning, yeah. you know, because they we're all human, outlet. but they actually just need to numb that, exactly. that pain that keeps coming out. And eventually it'll come out in a way where it'll affect the relations that you have, not only with yourself, with the community, but most importantly with Allah, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when we're in Salah, right, and we're saying Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah so many times and Allahu Akbar, and we're thinking about, you know, our weaknesses and we're exactly. having those conversations with Allah, it's important to be able to live it out in person how you're reflecting on those weaknesses Absolutely. you know those conversations with Allah are ultimately the most important thing mm -hmm. but do we leave our Islam no on the prayer mat or do yeah. we live it out in person yeah. are we trying to correct our behaviors as we move along mm -hmm. and sometimes we need other people to help us process those thoughts mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. we need somebody to be to have be that friend and tell you okay like pick it up now fam yeah. like you've been in your room for two weeks you exactly. haven't left your bed you know mm -hmm. alhamdulillah so it's a beautiful thing to be able to support our ummah yeah. it's a beautiful thing to be able to be honest but most importantly like no one can support you if you're not being able to say i need help oh absolutely and you another know? thing i feel like we live in a world that's like i'm good as you mm -hmm. were saying earlier and mm -hmm. everyone believes this thing internally mm -hmm. that nobody cares about you anyways yeah well nobody, i mean nobody's it, coming it, it, nobody's it, 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 it's, it's kind of a traumatic thing, right? When, when you share, like, let's say I told you you're my homie, and I'm just like, yo, um, something really messed up happened. Mm -hmm. And you just told me, yo, suck it up. Yeah, like, stop like, crying yeah. about it. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't want to share. Ever again. Ever again. Yeah. And I can get that. Mm -hmm. But now the problem is that person who told you to suck it up now has control over your entire life, even when they're not there anymore. Exactly. You're thinking about them and what they said to you when yeah. you're talking to other people. Yeah. And now those people that might have actually been there to support you, We'll never get a chance to because of that one person that you keep thinking of repeating. Mm. Sometimes it's really us versus us, you know? No, and we do have to be, there's a lot of strength and vulnerability. It mm. means being able to say, you know, like, I, I, I don't care. You know what I mean? That, like, somebody may potentially shut me down. Mm -hmm. There's potential of growth for me here. Yeah, exactly. I might be able to make a connection with somebody who can, like, not only help me with what I'm going through right now, but maybe push me even closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, exactly. you know what I mean, growing my potential. Like, even give me a job opportunity yeah, sometimes, yeah. you know? You just don't know. It's just, like, people people I've realized are very vulnerable financially sometimes mm -hmm. when it comes to, like, yeah. employment, right? They'll be like, yo, fam, like, do you know somebody who can help me with my resume? He also with my job. But I, I never see people doing that work emotionally. You know what I'm saying? Money makes you vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. People are like, yo, fam, do you know somebody who works in IT? Because, they, you know? So, I never thought of it that way, you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because even when it comes to money, people have no problem asking you for the money. Yeah. They're like, yo, I need, yeah. I need some money right now. I'm broke, mm -hmm. you know? But they'll Put never... Put me on game. Teach me about stocks, yeah. Bitcoin. But it's like, are you asking somebody to teach you how to be a better friend, a better father, a better husband, a, a better Muslim? You know what I mean? Like, truthfully. That's funny. Money will mm -hmm. make you vulnerable. That's facts. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like... I feel like we're in a world where people, you know, they think that vulnerability is something that is should be kept um, mm -hmm. a secret, right, and shouldn't be shown. Mm -hmm. And as you said, vulnerability comes with strength. Mm -hmm. I think the strongest people in the world are the ones that had to tap into that vulnerability mm -hmm. in order for you to even 
be fit and go to the gym, you actually have to get real with yourself. And be yeah. like, yo, this ain't it, right? Yeah. In do you order walk into the gym and just pick up weights and you just know what just, you're doing? <laughs> or do you ask people? Do you ask for a trainer? Do you Google to, it, you exactly. Know? Yeah. So, but I feel like, as you said, vulnerability. I mean, I made that video about vulnerability. And, you know, people weren't... It was dope, mashallah. Thank you. I appreciate that. And that's mm -hmm. probably because you're just an open-minded human being that mm -hmm. listened with open ears. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people thought that me saying men should be vulnerable was something that was weakening their masculinity. <laughs> and really, yeah. I was celebrating men and saying, hey, mm. the more a man can be vulnerable, the more he's open, open mm. to opportunity, open mm. to this marriage, open to life, open mm. to finances, open to the level up in general. Mm. Well, where does vulnerability stem from? Yeah. We're yeah. saying Shout it's a weakness. Shout out to you because I know you're constantly looking out for the brothers. You know what I mean? I'm trying. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> but like trying. I said, even if there is pushback, it can be a, a, a little bit understandable only because of the fact that sometimes if somebody convinces themselves so much, I'm tough, I don't need this, I don't need that, they're constantly going on to their life and they're putting on like, not not like a shell, but just something to protect them from ever being hurt mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. It's a fail-proof plan, you yeah. know what I mean? You'll never be hurt if you never connect with people, that's for yeah, sure. it's right? an easy way. So then when you hear you talking about vulnerability and this like, and that, it's almost like that whole identity is destroyed, yeah. you know? But subhanAllah, like even in those moments, I'm not gonna lie, like, what do we do when we receive new information? What do we What do we do when we like hear people talking about things that sometimes we don't even agree with? Mm -hmm. It's just a different opinion. Mm -hmm. What do we What do we see when people living a different life than our own? As long as it follows the deen, of course. Yeah. It's just like yo, like just listen. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has to be copy and paste with each other, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Me and you can have this conversation right now, and we might not agree on everything. Mm -hmm. But if I know your intention right now is to talk to me about like how can we help people, mm -hmm. we can talk about it because yeah. there's different ways to do it. Exactly, you know? and there's a common ground. The pushback right? is interesting. Interesting though, I think social media is a, a interesting place when it comes to pushback. They keep from my neck. They keep from my neck. But um, yeah, regarding mm. vulnerability, I think that if you're someone who has a relationship with Allah, there's no way that you can't be vulnerable. Hundred percent. If you're practicing and you're religious and mm -hmm. you got your pants rolled up, that mm -hmm. means that you should be a, a beacon or like someone who is actually representing vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Because when you pray that salah, you has mm -hmm. has to do with vulnerability. Mm -hmm. You surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to mm -hmm. do with vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And who's the most vulnerable man that you've ever heard of? The Prophet. Oh, so, so, yeah. And, and even with the way the Sahabas interacted with each other, right? They were not always the best at one thing. They constantly and I'm not a chef, of course, so don't call me this. But they're constantly asking each other for support on certain mm -hmm. things, right? Mm -hmm. Some would pray pray incredible amounts of hours. Some would be so proficient in understanding the Quran specifically. Some would be the ones that went to war. Some would be the ones that took care of the city. And it's just like everyone had a different role, but all of them relied on each other. Exactly. All of them were people who, who helped intentionally for the sake of Allah. Mm -hmm. Allah you know? So I think once we're able to center ourselves just in the fact that there, there really is nothing to be too proud of with being that egotistical centered person that needs nobody else that's a western product yeah. i want to put that out there like that is not something of our dakhla yeah. that is not something of our deen exactly. that is not something of our culture you know what i'm saying like we have to be able to help each other no, it's just the ways that are kind of presented nowadays on like how that support looks like I'm not going to lie, it looks very weird though sometimes, right? Like you hear people talking about, and this is someone who works in community. Yeah. Some people talk about community care, self-care, this, that. It's been gentrified, yeah. right? Yeah. People will tell you, yo, just sit in a room, do yoga, yeah, talk to meditate, yourself for half an hour, yeah. meditate. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah, like, I'm not, I'm not knocking it, yeah. but I'm just saying like, real, really and truly, like, if you're chilling with your homies, do you ask each other, how are you doing? First and foremost, it's right? It's not even a thing, yeah. Is that weird to say, like, is your Hoya, is your Hoya okay? Has she been happy recently? Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? Because then when, when you pass away, you want to be able to look at your homies and, and say, like, okay, I know they're going to take care of my family. Yeah. But how, do they know your family if they never ask? Yeah, yeah. This is what meek vulnerable means. Exactly. Being able to say, yo, my Hoya hasn't been good recently. Yeah, my make the is sick. Her. Make the after exactly. her. You know what I'm saying? How can we help each other with those things? Yeah. So. No, I think that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and as we said, it's... Vulnerability stems from your sense of deen and from mm. your sense of your relationship with Allah. That, First and foremost. That's the akhla that you're going to get akhlaq from that. You're going to get a humbleness mm -hmm, from that. Mm -hmm. That you're going to then deal with your hoya, your mother, your father, your children, your spouse mm -hmm. from that vulnerability. That's mm -hmm. your vulnerability bank. Mm -hmm, and if that's mm -hmm. empty, then mm -hmm. you're walking around with some macho stuff. Ain't nobody want that. 100%. That's just not what it is, you know? 100%. So f who do you think teaches young men about vulnerability? Um, I is think that something I, that Instagram is teaching us now to, to you know self care and all this stuff? Is that I don't I don't know. If I'm, I I don't know about Instagram too well, <laughs> so, but I do know growing up as a child before Instagram was out here, um, it was mostly trial and error. 
Childhood right? is big, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most of the things that we live out, I know people talk about childhood traumas and, you know, um, healing your inner child and all of that. But, yo, when you're a kid, if you go around and you see, like, th- horrible things are going on to your family members, your dad, your, your mom, whatever the case is, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to take notes, right? Yeah. And most of the time, fam, our parents, especially Somali diaspora, came from a place where they were constantly getting calls about people who passed away back mm-hmm. home. Mm-hmm. And they probably have seen a lot of death themselves. And they never had the time to process any of it. And alhamdulillah, shout out to all of the Hoyas and Abos because they did the best they could with yeah. what they had. Yeah, you know? they held it down. Yeah. But they were in a place where there was no time to breathe. As soon as they came here, they're raising us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so we were watching them and the way that they processed it. And it's not that they were telling us this is how it should be, you know, but we learn from that. And, but then we start to realize that, yo, this is this is kind of not healthy, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure we, we know so many families that have divorce rates out the roof, you know what I mean? Um, different things going on within our community, but it all comes because of the fact that they never got a chance to heal. But we can't blame them for that, yeah. you know? Yeah. But we can learn from it. Exactly. Because we do have time to breathe now. Yeah, it's no, it's our time now. We have a lot of opportunity yeah. now. We're not... We're in, a, we're in the middle of different wars mm-hmm. going on in the streets and mm-hmm. whatever the case is. But alhamdulillah, like, we're not fresh out here where, like, we have any, like, lack of opportunities, right? So we do have time to focus on our deen now. We do have time to focus on our community. And most importantly, we do have time to focus on what am I limiting myself from? Because that's the biggest thing. So just to answer your question, I don't know I'm being a bit long-winded. Oh, I, I told you it's what I do, fam, you know? We like but this. I, I think most of it came from trial and error, right? Figuring out what worked and what did it. And most of the time we just say, I don't really have time to try to figure this out anymore. Let me just let me just coast. Let me just go on autopilot. Mm-hmm. Let me get that job. Let me go to school. Let me get married. Let me live my family. And only near the end of our life, I worked at a retirement home, subhanAllah, before. And um, one of the most interesting things, a lot of them said, these are Adan folk mm-hmm. talking to me, mm-hmm. you know, was that I wish I had time really to just, like, not be my worst enemy. Oh, wow. You know, wow. a lot of them said that yeah. in different ways, of course, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of regrets on like, why did I, why did I do this to other people? Yeah. Why did I do this to myself? Mm-hmm. And it's because they never really had time to breathe and recollect and recall certain things. So we don't know when we're going to go. Right. This life is very short. It is. All of us are on our own timer. But I do make sincere doubt that all of us at least have the time to reflect on what are we holding ourselves back from, from one, being able to enter Jannah before anything, but two, while we're in this world, to be better friends, better people, but most importantly, kinder to ourselves, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, who are we to disrespect Allah's creation, which is our own? Yeah. Listen, on that note, I've I've tell people all the time that mm-hmm. Allah put us on a pedestal mm-hmm. over all his creation. Alhamdulillah, it was a blessing to even be right? here. Right? To be a human, mm-hmm. right? We're mm-hmm. not angels, we're not uh we're not shaitan, we're not none of these other mm-hmm. things, right? We are human beings, mm-hmm. right? We're not mm-hmm. animals. So Allah put us on a pedestal mm-hmm. and there a whole bunch of other creations are actually jealous of oh we wish we could be human, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But when Allah put us on a pedestal, why are we not then putting human beings on pedestals? Why yeah. are we then we are why are we then not saying we have to be careful and selective with the way that we treat the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know? Um, and I think it just as you said, there's so many childhood things, first of all. With everyone that I meet, I always talk to them about their childhood because it shows what path, you know, brought mm-hmm, them here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So for you, like the young Abd Fatah, mm-hmm. what do you wish that someone told you when you were younger that would have helped you along the way? Or what would you tell yourself? Growing up, hmm. it's crazy. I love asking those questions. I don't know how to answer. Them, right? <laughs> you never but, ask um, yourself. <laughs> no, that's why I'm here. Alhamdulillah. But I will say before I answer, Alhamdulillah, I have like very great role models with my boy and Abu. Nice, beautiful relationship. Alhamdulillah, they're best friends. You know, that's okay. Uh, the way that they treat each other, Alhamdulillah, like it was been a blessing watching it. So most of what I learned is from my Abu. Right? Mm-hmm. He taught me as a man, yo, bro, just. Be quiet mm-hmm. and be supportive and be there for those who need it. People call him all the time. Mashallah, he opened a massage where people come and they nice. praise Allah and like you know what I mean. They need support, so it was interesting learning from him. So Alhamdulillah, I, I, most questions I had, he answered it, right? But mo- but the biggest thing that I would have wanted to know and that even he couldn't help me out with is just how do I play my part as a Muslim in this world that we live in here? Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, because we're just trying to figure it all out. You go to school, even if you're going to Duxi every single day, you're go- if you go to school mm-hmm. and you're there eight hours of the day, majority of your life, this is bigger than home now. It is. Because you're, you're in a mixing pot. You're with everybody. You're trying to survive. You're trying to make friends. You're just trying to be happy, eat mm-hmm. lunch, whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. So we lose a lot of our, like, 
Dean when we do those things sometimes. Um, and people don't necessarily tell you, like, how do we hold on to that Iman while we're in these in these spaces, you know? And a lot of those things lead, like, even though we're born Muslim and, inshallah, we all die Muslim, somewhere along the line, sometimes, like, you lose the guilt of, like, certain things, right? I'm not here to judge anybody's sins, but I mean even, like, you know, like, slowly not praying or getting into certain things, whatever the case is. So I had to learn a lot of those things myself. I had to t put myself into places where, you know, I could talk to different sheikhs or, you know what I mean, do my own independent research or whatever the case is. But it, 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 I think being in this world, specifically as a Muslim, is a test that we, sh that we should be trying our best to ace. Because yeah. if, we're, if we're going through harder obstacles to mm -hmm. try to be a good Muslim, mm -hmm. the reward is bigger. Exactly. 100%. So let's take advantage of it. No, you know? absolutely. And mm -hmm. while you're here, you don't know. You don't know how long you're going to be here. 100%. And so yesterday really mattered. And then today really matters. Every and conversation you have, everyone matters. Every minute matters. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's going to matter, that's going to play back on the Day of Judgment. Mm -hmm. So you better calculate that before it's mm -hmm. calculated, right? Mm -hmm. um, so with, with Hidayah House, right? This mm -hmm. is obviously, is it legacy-based for you? Yeah, I don't, I don't see myself doing this work forever. Only mm -hmm. because of the fact that who am I to think I can support people my whole life and that I'm going to constantly understand what's going on with the youth, right? Mm -hmm. Even now, like, I'm 28, turning 29 soon. When I started this work until now, I'm already kind of out of the loop for some things, okay. right? I kind of don't get certain things that I go, <laughs> I got, you know what I mean? Okay. TikTok trends, <laughs> okay. you know? But even with the problems that they have, like, as, as, as youth, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a bit of a disconnect. But it's most importantly, it's just, like, I'm, I'm hopefully trying to, like, teach other members of the team and other youth like how do we continue doing this work right mm -hmm. i don't want this cycle that we were talking about earlier of like we don't see people doing this work anymore continuing like how come every single time there's a basketball tournament somebody thinks they're the first to do it and they don't know where to start and they, there's been a million basketball tournaments yeah. in the city yeah. why aren't we so, giving each other the blueprint <laughs> yeah you know? yeah so inshallah i want to be able to like help support how did that work continue the diet house is not my own mm -hmm. right yeah, it's, it's just something that we it, started yeah. but Hidayah is uh, my mom's nickname. Is it? You know what I mean? Okay. Alhamdulillah. Shout and, out to Hoyle. And inshallah, we're trying to open a community center. Nice. And I want to always be able to continue with support with that. But yeah, definitely. There's no way I can do this work forever. Um, What's your life goal? What does, what does Abdi Fatah want to do in life? Um, honestly, I have a passion, you know what I mean, for like a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. But right now, like most other people, I'm in survival mode where I'm just trying to pay, pay bills and do this and do that and save up. But inshallah, it will be a place where I can constantly help people in whatever capacity I can, constantly get as much ajr and barakah I can, mm -hmm. and get enough money to take care of myself and my family, whatever way that looks, you know? So, okay. inshallah. So, um, I have to ask you a relationship question, because obviously we're on a relationship podcast. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. when it comes to men and women, what do you think is... What do you think is the power struggle? Because I know you're young, you're in a you're in a certain time in your life where mm -hmm. I'm sure you've had enough experience, not all life experience, but enough experience to see mm -hmm. the way that men and women are couple these days, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And as you said, there's so many divorce rates, there's so many people that are young who want to get married, which mm -hmm. is a good thing, you know, it's it's half of your dean, right? But there's a problem with men and women where there's a disconnect between their vulnerability themselves, there's financial vulnerability, there's, uh, you know, and it's intimacy, really, if you mm -hmm. think about it, right? People think intimacy is like a physical thing, but it's mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. It's it's an emotional thing. It's a spiritual thing. Um, and intimacy is in to me see. It's allowing for someone to see. To me see. Like that. She's a poet, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. But, yeah. um, but I'm saying, like, for for people to see into you is something that people are afraid of. So mm -hmm. what do you think um, is an issue that people need to figure out when it comes to coupling? Mm -hmm. Coupling, what do you think that you would advise young men who want to be in a flourishing, successful, halal mm -hmm. relationship? I don't know. I feel like I've seen this thing where the most of the discourse on like how men should be able to be men okay. comes from like, like others that aren't men, okay. right? And most of the discourse that I see on like how women should be, the loudest people are on the internet are usually other are men, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, and, and, but I've never seen like, I've never seen a discourse between men and women a lot of the times where they're generally telling each other like this is how I want to be supported. So I'm talking about like genuine communication, right? Mm -hmm. And and also just men being able to tell men like this is kind of how we should. Support each other. Women telling other women. And I'm sure. I'm sure this happens more, right? But women telling other women, this is how we should support each other. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like there's a, there's a disconnect, right? And I don't think most of it is real. Okay. I think it's I, I think it's on the internet. Okay. Because I don't I don't see a lot of guys telling me how much they hate women every day. You get what I'm saying? 
Okay. When I go on the internet, it's everywhere. Yo, it's everywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. And and like, alhamdulillah, shout out to my sisters. You know, I have two sisters, yes. mashallah, and like a lot of like cousins and women that I work with in the community and you, you know. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't see them coming to me telling me how much they hate men often yeah. in yeah. real life. Oh. But I see it everywhere on the internet. Mm -hmm. So there has to be some some sort of disconnect mm -hmm. because if we're constantly on our phones, and even if that's not the discourse in real life. If that's what we start to believe, you know what I mean? If that's what we start to look through, if that's what is constantly on our mind and is programming, um, forget about like the actual way that you feel about the other gender. I'm sure for a fact, at least that like, you're not gonna see them as somebody you wanna talk to these things about. Okay. You're not gonna start to see them as people that you wanna be vulnerable with. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you go into a relationship or a friendship or a work thing, whatever the case is, you know what I mean? You're not gonna come in and, and, and sit down with a woman and just be like, yo, like, like how 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 do how do you view men? Mm -hmm. You're gonna constantly think women already hate men. Yeah, yeah. And most women, I'm assuming, are like, yo, like, yeah, that guy's cool, but like, he's probably like those other guys yeah. I've seen ever on the internet. Because yeah, yeah. what else can you believe, yeah, right? So there's a huge disconnect. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, and it could definitely start with conversations like this, but. I think we gotta take it easy on the social media stuff. Yeah, right, and actually just yeah. happen to reality. Actually, just have a conversation. Yeah, you know? I think that's important. Yeah. So, what do you think a relation? What makes a relationship work? Is it the communication, as mm -hmm. you said? Mm -hmm. Is it the consideration? Mm -hmm. Is it just having healthy understanding of yourself? What do you mm -hmm. feel like mm -hmm. makes a relationship work? Uh, like Alhamdulillah, I had a good template with my dukes, right? With my nice. mom and dad, Alhamdulillah. But I've seen sabr is the biggest thing, right? Sabr and curiosity, I'd say. Like sabr with, with the way that a person a person moves, okay. um, having sabr with the fact that not everyone's gonna like be good in two seconds and being okay with that, not personalizing it, but being curious to know like how do you better support somebody? Mm. What makes that person mad and what makes them happy? Mm. You know what I mean? What ways does a person want to be spoken to? What ways do they don't? Uh, most of the times, if you just come in and like, let's say, let's say I like. Eating chicken wings with barbecue sauce, okay. right? Ooh, I love chicken wings, that's why I first got about it. But okay. if I come into a space and I come to a party and I just assume everyone wants barbecue sauce on their wings, yeah. um, that's me like just projecting myself onto everyone yeah. else, right? Yeah. But if you're in a relationship, of course, or, or whatever the case is, and you're asking somebody, like, how do you like your chicken wings? That's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a good thing to ask 100%. because now you're not assuming that you just know everything, right? Yeah. And again, I, I think that comes with the disconnect on social media. Like we don't want to ask the opposite gender what do they want. We don't want to ask our partners what do they want. We're just assuming this is what everybody said that they want, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, so, you know, people love you know. people based off of what they think, as mm -hmm. you said. Yeah. And I think that's toxic. Right away, mm -hmm. so many couples have this issue mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, but how come he doesn't like that? That's what I do. Like, mm -hmm. no, it's mm -hmm. not about you, though. Mm -hmm. It's about learning about the other person. It's mm -hmm. about being, like, understanding and see, having capacity for somebody else and be like, yo, this is, yeah, he likes those barbecue wings. Mm -hmm. So she has to be able to explore that and be like, okay, but this is what he likes. Not mm -hmm. this is what I like to give, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So giving from a selfish place doesn't make sense. Giving mm -hmm. from a selfless place would make sense and mm -hmm. studying your partner mm -hmm. in order to study a partner though you have to have already studied yourself yeah and understand 100%. what your, you means to you mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. when it comes to a relationship who leads the household i don't know if I'm in your head like in, in my head uh, the thing is in my head i don't have an assigned person or a role or gender that does it only because i know it worked in my house you know okay. what i mean my hoya led the goodie, okay. but my dad led the goodie from behind the goodie. You know okay, what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> my mom was the boss, <laughs> okay. and she, everything she said goes. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the most crucial decisions, my abu is the one who, like my hoya constantly asked my abu, like, do you think we should do it like this, this, that? And he said, yeah, but he never like sat at the table and said, guys, listen, we need to have a meeting. Yeah, right? okay. My hoya was in charge of everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? From the finances to whatever. But like when the most crucial decisions came forward, it was my abu. And, and they were a team, like sometimes my Hoya would. So it, it was always a bit confusing to me because they was <laughs> never, it was literally never a conversation like you see on TV, like, go ask your dad. Or my, then my dad's like, it was literally, I just asked my mom, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But when it came to something serious, I knew I could always ask my dad. You okay. know what I'm saying? So, so basically, it was, it was a team effort. They were both the leaders of the household. And I've seen other families, alhamdulillah, where like the Abo was like the central figure role, right? And the Hoya, of course, is the Hoya. She's a she's a heart of the household. But the Abba, when it came to like decision making, I just think it's it's less important about deciding which gender is going to do it and just realizing what dynamic works for people. Okay. Yeah. You know so what, what works for each couple. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So I, I believe in that too. Um, I do feel like though that 
men and women have different natures. Oh, right? 100%. We, we, can't, yeah. we can't deny that, right? 100%. And so I feel like women, they lead in a certain way, mm -hmm. and I feel like men lead in a certain way. Mm -hmm. For example, I give this example all the time. Mm -hmm. If a burglar comes to the door, right, mm -hmm. at night, mm -hmm. and you and your woman are sleeping, mm -hmm. who's going to lead that mission? Obviously, it's going to be you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Who Who's the one who asks for the hand in marriage? It's you. Mm -hmm. Who leads that mission? It's you. Who has to, um, who's going to, you know, propose? It's you. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I feel like, the man should be the head of the household, but the woman is the neck. Mm -hmm. The juggler is in the neck. The life is mm -hmm. in the neck, really, if you think about it, right? It's a lot of moments over here <laughs> with your house. No, we'll talk you know right what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, the, the head can't move without the neck. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can move your head without the neck. Mm -hmm. So for your parents to be people that understood that concept, mm -hmm. right? And your father wasn't flexing his muscles of like, I run this household, mm -hmm. right? then a woman can naturally be in her position in her feminine power where she's being hoya and she's nurturing you guys and her husband is right behind her saying yep that's right that's my wife mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think that's a good dynamic mm -hmm. but then there's a lot of women that the power struggle i feel like comes from the fact that women are trying to play up this masculine energy mm -hmm. and then they're not sitting in their real power so what happens there's a power struggle between mm -hmm. men and women and if a woman flexes and says oh i'm the i'm the leader of this house well, i'm sure your mom was not out here putting pressure on your dad saying what are you Never, you know, yeah. it's not going to work that way because mm -hmm. then there's a lack mm -hmm. of respect, mm -hmm. right? And so I feel like men are the leaders and women are also the leaders, but in their own right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who sets the tone? I have this conversation with everyone. Like, I ask people who sets the tone. I asked it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Everybody was out here trying to be I like, see the fever, I, I set the tone. Women are like, mm -hmm. no, I do. Mm -hmm. Men are like, no, I do. Mm -hmm. So everyone's out here. There's a disconnect. There's a major disconnect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But guess what? Why, what are we fighting for? Mm -hmm. You're a man. I'm mm -hmm. a woman. There's things I can do that you can never do. Facts. I can birth a whole kid. Mm -hmm. Are you all here competing with me about that? You can't, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's things that you could do. You could lift a certain amount of weight. I could never do that, yeah. right? So therefore, why don't we just respect each other's roles? Mm -hmm. Why don't we just love on each other? Why mm -hmm. don't we just celebrate the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us? Mm -hmm. And then there wouldn't be any sort of friction between men and women. Yeah. Who sets the tone, I asked, and everybody said, I do. Mm -hmm. Then I said, yo, how about a man sets the tone and a woman creates the environment? Mm -hmm. Like, why? Like, your mm -hmm. dad was setting the tone of safety and, mm -hmm. okay, where's the children, everything's good. As you said, he was behind the goodie and the other goodie, you know? Mm -hmm. But your mom was able to be in the house mm -hmm. creating the environment. Mm -hmm. So it works together. Mm -hmm. And that's that's how partnership works. It's beautiful, yeah. So I think that's, that's a beautiful uh, way of putting it. I'm mm -hmm. glad that you um, agree with that. I'm glad that you were raised in that, right? We need more people that are willing to tell people that that's a norm. Mm -hmm. It's a normal thing to surrender and you don't have to be submissive to the person. You can be submissive to the relationship. You mm -hmm. can submit yourself to the relationship and be someone who's in this ten toes down. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So and even and even if some people like, and even if some people like didn't come from like let's say a healthy household, or even within their own person, I've had a lot of toxic relationships. Uh, Yo, know, please free yourself from that cycle. Only because whatever happened happened, you can't change it, right? Mm -hmm. But but the moment you start meeting new people and like. You know, you have to start taking certain precautions to make sure you never get hurt again. Mm -hmm. And you're not vulnerable like we were talking about. You don't heal from those things. You're going to repeat that cycle constantly. Absolutely. And, I, and I see that happening with so many different things. So may Allah make it easy for everybody. For I, I generally do think our generation of people, like, inshallah, in the near future, will be having, like, the most healthiest relationships where, like, it's based in the deen Absolutely. and the iman. And we're supporting each other like a yeah. household, like you said, because... Yeah. There is an agenda for us to have like broken down families, you yeah, know. Yeah, we can't subscribe to that. And and this dunya does benefit from Muslims not being able to support each other in strong families. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So we gotta fight against that at all. And costs. we have enough. We have enough that's going against us. Mm -hmm. We're young. We're black. Mm -hmm. We're Muslim. We're Somali. We're a lot of things. Yeah. You know. And so having that, the generations that will come to actually be healthy mm -hmm. you know there's generational wealth there's mm -hmm. generational trauma mm -hmm. but there also has to be generational healing 100%. and that's our responsibility we're the ones who were either born in this country or have mm -hmm. been raised in this country mm -hmm. we have a chance that they didn't have our parents mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> we need to do that and do it now right so that's why i love the work that you do fams you know what i mean we're talking about emotional intelligence talking about topics that we don't usually talk about and if we're not passing those things along, everyone, again, is learning through test, uh, trial and error, right? So yeah, and if you don't do it, what are your kids going to do? 
And if we don't support and love Hedaya each other, Hedaya House, who will? <laughs> who will? Thank you so much, Abdullah, for joining no me on this conversation. Thank you for having me. I'm sure we'll have way more conversations, inshallah. The conversation inshallah. is open for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to create an environment where everyone has a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. No one's excluded, mm -hmm. no matter who you are, where you came from, mm -hmm. and what you've been through. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you, and thank you for joining me. Once Jazakallah again. for having me. Well, yeah. Uh, make sure you guys tap into this conversation with Abdi Fatah from Hedaya House. Make sure you support them as much as you possibly can. Supporting them is supporting yourself. And um, yeah, stay tuned for more Khay Talks, and uh, we'll see you next time.